Hello everyone, welcome back. Gotta apologize real quick about our Nubs of India video. We're having a little bit of a problem. We can't stop finding these things. They are everywhere. We started out with five sites and now we are over 20 sites. They are unbelievable guys. It's gonna be a very long video, maybe a multi-part series. We're gonna have a lot to talk about and I've got a lot of extra links and articles and things for you guys to look at so it's a lot more involved than we thought it's gonna take a little bit longer to produce this video so give me a little bit of time on that one and I thought today I could show you guys something that I was just shown by Ziggy Dan shout out Ziggy Dan we have found some very interesting things over in Nubia Moreau Sudan we have found nubs on the Nubian pyramids very very interesting I had never thought to f look for nubs on these pyramids now I looked at them briefly when I was going through my bevel block series and I knew that there's there's something about them they're very well well made but he found them he found the nubs they are there so we're gonna take a closer look at some photos I found some photos he found and just give you a little teaser video to hold you over until our nubs of India video now, from what Ziggy can tell, and from what I can tell also, it seems that all the nubs, or at least most of them, are concentrated on this pyramid here, and some of the facade elements in the front. So, I'm going to have to say that this one is one of the originals, and perhaps some of the ones around it of equal quality are the originals. And then, of course, we're going to see lots of later reproductions and recycling of other older elements, and lots of different new configurations. So... It's got a long history at this site, but I think we can clearly spot the oldest original structures here, and all we have to do is follow the nubs. Now, right away, you walk up to this facade, and the one that sticks out right away is this one up on the right. Pretty obvious round one all by itself. Not sure what meaning that has. And you see some other darker spots. I think these are also traces of nubs. We'll see that some of them look like dark um, inclusions, almost like different types of rock sticking out of the softer sandstone. So I'll show you some more pictures of that, see what you guys think. Like here, for example, you can see these darker patches. I think this is what's going on on the upper portions of that other pyramid and on the side. They look like a different type of stone inclusion or maybe just a, a scored darkened burnt patch of stone it's very hard to describe this but it's in a few places here's another detail photo of that facade the lower left portion you see this darker patch there and then these darker patches down here they look almost like you know scorch marks or some kind of burnt spots on the stones it's very strange and here again see these burnt spots what are these here and here they look like a different type of stone inclusion. I really, I got, I got nothing. That's, that's a very strange phenomenon. They, they really do look like the Peruvian nubs where they are a darker material, especially around the Cori Concha. They look a lot like this. Very, very strange. Okay, so what I tried to do is I tried to go through Google and Shutterstock here and Alamy.com and all these different stock photo sites and try to find as many high res photos of these as I could so we'll just kind of go through them here one at a time some of them just I pulled just to show scale and context of where these things are and their relations to each other some of these are very good quality photos some of these smaller ones they do appear to vary in quality they have, they have less hallmarks on them we'll say they, they're still well put together but you don't see any bevels or any the the corner ang uh, I don't even know what you would call it it's some kind of corner trim it's an Egyptian motif I believe on on all the corners of the pyramids like this one in the background here has this corner trim on it and we'll see better photos of those and again this one here I think you can see a few here this one pyramid seems to be where all the nubs are concentrated and of course a lot of it's gone I wonder how many more nubs would have been on the backside there really isn't too many good high-res photos that, that shows the front of this or any angle of this, really. I can't get too close 
to these without them getting pixelated and the quality breaking down. Some of them appear to have been broken into. This was probably a facade and it's gone, like this one here, a facade that is gone. All of them appear to have had them originally. It was all part of the original plan to have these little facades on the front. And then some of these are interesting. They're smaller little facade elements, but they're by themselves. And I want you to note, if you look close, some of these blocks have beveled edges on them. A few of the blocks around here have beveled edges and the L-shaped block there's a lot of those, and you'll see a few instances of small filler stones at corners as well. So there's a lot of stone hallmarks here that link it to a lot of our other engineer sites. Here's a pretty good one. We can see with good lighting, you can see how some of these nubs are popping out. Very random. They don't seem like a standardized lifting technique. I don't think that's how these were put together. They seem esoteric or like a language, something else. This angle with good lighting, the one up here, and I believe these are also nubs down here. Same phenomenon, maybe not protruding as much. Other ones have this weird darkened surface to them. A lot of them on the upper areas have these. I want to point out some of these also have bevels in them, and some of these are the L-shaped blocks as well especially down here, look at these big bevels on these blocks. See some of these have a darker surface to them, and look at this real close. Why do these have nubs, or what would you call that? Is that, is that a bevel with a nub inside of it? Was this some kind of artistic installation, a, a statuary like a gargoyle or something going there? You see them on the other side here, how they protrude just on this one area, these these bevels that become nubs almost, and then perhaps some smaller little nubs in here, around here. Hard to tell, some of this stuff, quality so poor. Nice side view of the one with the nubs here. You see a few. And Ziggy Dan really found some good photos. He went through Google Earth, I believe, and took screenshots. This is very interesting. Look closely. You see all the dark circular spots. I believe these are nubs or what we're gonna have to call nubs or other stone inclusions. They're not everywhere. Very sporadic. Interesting. And then like I was talking about this corner trim. It's very nice and smooth top to bottom. Very well done. Sometimes it's made up of several blocks. So not just one trim block but it's multiple blocks incorporated in the trim like over here there's your small filler stone at a corner right there here's a good one one lone nub right up here why is he there I like this angle it shows another L-shaped block with a small filler stone another one a slight L-shaped block there and some interesting beveling on some of these blocks over here. Aha, uh -huh. and see back here? I know it's pixelated, but they're there. All these little pock marks, these little circular bumps, these are nubs all over the this pyramid might be the one we've seen from the other photos before it was restored now. So the whole back is missing off of this one, and like we saw in the previous photos, the whole back of that one nubbed pyramid is nice and smooth. This may be the same one before it was restored. Very, very interesting. I like this down here, this concentration. You can see them very well. And see here again, more of this discoloration, this darker area on the upper blocks versus the lighter color of the lower blocks. You zoom in, you start seeing some bevels on some of the blocks. Very interesting, only a few of them. Why is that? I like these two, these are right next to each other, sat like unbelievably close to each other. You, there's just a tiny space you can walk through, but for the most part, they are linked, almost same foundation here for these two. I'm assuming they were probably the same or similar size in the past. And here's our main pyramid that we're talking about again. Sometimes you just have to have the right lighting conditions to see some of these, but they're there. Here's that interesting little piece by itself. You can see the bevels better here. Zoom in a little bit more. 
the beveling on this block and then you see over here on this side all these blocks have that beveled edge to them this is like Baalbek and Jerusalem and lots of other places like we talk about in my series you know, I should have really added this site to the bevel block catalog but I didn't even know that they were here and they just they're so isolated I, mean, I was looking more for uh, all over and or at least the, you know, the whole foundation being bevel, bevel block but for some reason they're only isolated to certain parts of the bases and sections of the pyramids it's very strange why why choose certain surface treatments for some areas but then you they could perfect they could do perfectly flat surfaces in other areas so what's this juxtaposition of surface treatments I really don't get it really good photo here of our pyramid in question you can see them they're fuzzy but every little fuzzy bump is a nub and it looks like in some instances they are in a pattern like three with one above so this might be a language perhaps this is a similar orientation to what is on the casing stones of the Menkare pyramid and the Khafre pyramid and perhaps at one time the Great Pyramid again here look at how well they could surface the stones very flat but then for some reason there are a few that they decided to leave the beveled edge on or add the beveled edge to why did they do that thanks Eric LaForge for this photo fuzzy but again we see the nubs really good high quality image here zoom in real close you can examine this photo for hours you can see small holes at corners square holes and then you look close at some of these blocks they have beveled edges to them but not all of them again seems like several at the foundation they have the bevels and as it gets higher up the bevels seem to go away but then again like I was saying before there's a couple here that are out of place or these seem like maybe decorative motifs artistic installations of some kind perhaps nice angle here shows the extent of the construction of these oldest ones I'm gonna say these nicest ones and then this beveled edge down here you can see on some of the blocks it seems to be a foundation phenomenon more than anything else but places like Baalbek they're all over here you go here's another filler stone at a corner but it's a large one it's almost a quarter of the block and while we're here that might be a nub on that block down there just a good close-up of the fitment and the surface treatment on the blocks I would like to point out one pairing of stones in particular how about that trapezoidal or compound polygonal connection for what reason that's just esoteric that's just symbolic that is there as a as a wink and a nod to anyone looking for it I think the showing that the builders were very very clever and that they knew people would be looking at the architecture for repeating hallmarks I think and this little nod to, to us looking for the hallmarks and then I really like this example and Ziggy Dan also picked up on this and he has some photos now on this pyramid there are two on the same course a few blocks apart and then I think there might be even a couple others but for sure these two maybe there as well this area on the right again strange I'm really fascinated why that's there maybe on this part over here why those little bits are like that this one has a heavily rebuilt facade you can see the large blocks that used to be more than likely the whole construction and then look real close and you'll see some of these blocks have beveled edges very interesting our pyramid in question again see with the right lighting you can start to see them they pop out there there and then it seems like there's a concentration of them in the upper area on all sides good straight on high quality photo here that one and then the others again the repair to the back side and we'll zoom in to see if we can see some of these over here these are the nubs we're gonna see these better in Ziggy Dan's photos in a second just trying to drive the point home 
Okay, so now we'll run through Ziggy Dan's photos. You can see he spotted this cluster up at the top, just like we, just like I did. This set of three here, three, and then one by itself, one above maybe. Here again, three, and these different, different shapes, circular, somewhat elongated above here, one over here. These two on the same row again, and then maybe others below. Another close-up. Yes, they're definitely there. This is a very good angle. You can see this cluster here. One, two, three, four, five, and maybe even six down here. They're all over this side, over here. There's lots, but they're very faint. They're not, they don't protrude as much as some of the other examples we've seen. They're very faint. I wonder if that has something to do with the mineralogy of the stones. See, here's his close-up. He spotted this cluster as well. You can see some of this polygonal stonework, L-shaped blocks again. He picked up on some of these bevels down here on the lower courses. That's very reminiscent of Jerusalem and Baalbek, some other places. I think he turned the color off and just did a black and white filter. And that really shows them off, doesn't it? You can really tell where they are and these strange clusters and patterns. It really does look like some kind of esoteric language. A close-up that he found. It is darker, rounded, looks like a stone inclusion, but could be the same mineralogy as the rest of the stone, I guess. And then just a couple more close-ups here. Again, they're darker. They do protrude. They are nubs, just like we see at the tombs of the nobles in Egypt. And I'll show you some other examples from Ethiopia from inside a crypt in a second to kind of show you the path of the nubs through Africa. But they're the same kind of expression to an extent. Darker, kind of crude, lumpy shapes. They're not very refined or defined and kind of shallow. They don't protrude very far, not as much as, say, the Peruvian examples. And here's where we just were. Almost like a constellation or some kind of coded language system. Perhaps one even down here. Another good angle of that one suspicious pyramid. I think that's pretty much proved it, guys. There are nubs here in Nubia. Are these the Nubians? Nubians? What were they what were they getting up to here in Sudan? Was was this phenomenon of nubs? Was it going through Africa? I think so. It starts perhaps in Egypt, and then works its way down into Africa. Here at Sudan we see them. And then let's pause for a second and I'll show you some at Ethiopia. So here we are inside a crypt in Ethiopia. You'll see one of these boxes has nubs on it. How about that? Has anyone shown you that before? Nubs on boxes in Ethiopia, just like in Egypt and all over the world, really. I've seen them on islands in Micronesia, Japan. They're all over. And then the entrance into this crypt. Look down here to the left. You see a nub on a block. And some of these have faint bevels to them. And there's lots of L-shaped blocks and polygonal connections. So there's a lot of overlapping hallmarks here that tie whatever was going on in Ethiopia to whatever was going on in Sudan, to whatever was going on in Egypt and Jerusalem and all over Asia Minor, into Europe, the Mediterranean, South America, it's all over. Whatever this phenomenon is, whatever it means, whatever these are, it's a global phenomenon. So we need to start looking at them as such. And I think we could explain a lot of mysteries and open up a lot of new mysteries just by following these nubs. I really do think now that they are one of the best hallmarks of our ancient engineers. They show, they're like a little wink and a nod. If you look for them, you can find them, you know our work. There might be more deeper meaning to them, but it's almost like a little joke at this point that they've been left for us to find. And when you guys see all the, the instances in India that me and Philip at Ancient Alternative View, Ziggy Dan, Uchronia Utopia Dave, we've all been looking for these. And it really, it'll make your head hurt 
looking at some of these ornate temples, trying to find these nubs. But more, li more than likely, you will find a nub hidden somewhere in a temple in India. We, like I said, we went from five to 20 sites or more. There are some temples I found that there are four identical versions of those temples, so I have to look at all four and getting the names right. Pronouncing these names is going to be almost impossible. I'm going to try my best, but I hope you guys will stick around for that video. I'm really excited to show it to you. It shows one of the best connections for Peruvian and Indian contact with each other. Somehow, some way, the nub builders of India were doing the same kinds of things as the nub builders in Peru. And we're going to have to think about the ramifications of that, the implications, and open our minds to how connected these people were in the past and what kind of interactions they had with each other. So thank you guys for hanging out with me. Sorry this was kind of a rushed random video, but new new news for me, so I thought I'd share it with you guys too. Hope you all appreciated it. Thank you again. We'll talk to you guys next time.